Hi, it's Marcus. I'm a third year medical student at the University of Cambridge, and I recently graduated from the IB diploma with 43 points. In this video, I'm going to be reacting to my IB biology higher level internal assessment. I think I got 21 out of 24 in this IA, and while that's not a perfect score, hopefully you can learn something from this IA, or at least laugh at my mistakes. Anyways, I hope you enjoy it, and let's get into it. How does changing the temperature of the growth medium affect growth of Saccharomyces cerevisiae under anaerobic conditions? So quite literally, how does yeast grow in different temperatures? Okay, so biology IAs are very different from chemistry IAs, where chemistry IAs, you sort of have to go and investigate something completely different and, and find something totally new, whereas a biology IA, uh, how does yeast grow in different temperatures is what I did. Uh, it's really not that inventive or creative or anything really. It's quite a simple question. And the point is, with biology IAs, stick to the simple stuff, stick to the stuff that you know uh, the experiment will work, at least, so that you can get a good grade. So I have the title and then I have the research question, which are essentially the same thing, except for in the research question, I specify this stuff, the turbidity of culture. I was always interested in how energy was made in the human body. So I researched the basics into how energy is harnessed in the body and found that two types of respiration are responsible for this. These are aerobic and anaerobic respiration. I was particularly intrigued by anaerobic respiration since it was totally different depending on the organism and can be vital. I have a typo. I have a typo in the third sentence of my IA. Don't do this. That is ridiculously bad. Please do not have typos in your IA. Like, come on and can be vital in countless processes, including denitrification in certain bacteria, such as Pseudomonas, important in the nitrogen cycle, or the reduction of metal ions in iron-3, um, blah, blah, blah. However, I found that the most important use of anaerobic respiration was in the industrial production of beer through the fermentation of sugars using Saccharomyces cerevisiae under anaerobic conditions. I was curious about why these conditions were, and why the temperature had to be controlled at such a degree of precision. For this reason, I elected to study how temperature affects the rate of anaerobic respiration in Saccharomyces cerevisiae using the growth rate as an indicator for the rate of anaerobic respiration. So instead of actually measuring respiration, I'm just measuring the growth rate and being like, respiration, which doesn't quite add up. So far, this doesn't look so good. This seems a lot worse than my chemistry one, where this one, I tried to come up with a really kind of BS reason for studying this, where I'm like, you know, beer, blah, 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 this, that doesn't make any sense. Like, and then I have a typo, like right at the beginning, that's, that's stupid. I should not have done that. Anyway, let's move on. Background reading. So again, having a nice little diagram is really cool. And then I have another diagram here. That's also really cool. And yeah, basically I just go into anaerobic respiration, which is fine. And then my variables. So I have independent variable, dependent variable, control variables. So again, I have my control variables in this cool table thing. <laughs> Don't put your tables crossing two pages for the love of God. Like I get, I get that I sort of had to, right? But Jesus Christ, that's bad. Do not put your tables across pages. <laughs> anyway, at least I have my control variables and everything is okay. Methods, sure regular method. And then I have my adaptations to method. That's really cool. So instead of just having a regular old method, I'm like, this is my method. And this is how I changed it with my preliminary results. Um, and how I adapted it to make it better and better suited. Um, this is something this adaptations to method bit is something that people don't really think about. Um, but essentially will be making up a lot of your marks because this is where people this is where the examiner is going to be looking for the personal engagement. They're going to be looking for, for your evaluation skills. They're going to be looking for the communication even. Uh, and, and you really can't overlook something as simple as just like, this is what I changed in my method based off of these findings. So originally the experiment was designed to measure the gas produced over a period of time using a gas syringe. However, after extensive preliminary trials with different volumes and concentrations, no gas was collected. And this method had to be adapted. From here came the idea of changing the research question itself to measure the growth rate of Saccharomyces of yeast and using this as an indicator for the rate of anaerobic respiration. 
different methods for re measuring the growth rate of microorganisms were researched. And from this, it was concluded that using the turbidity of a culture of cells as a measure of, for the concentration of cells was ideal to measure the growth of a cell culture over a period of time. This is because a colorimeter allows precise measurements of the turbidity of a solution, and since the turbidity of a solution and the concentration cells are directly correlated, a value of the growth of cells can be taken to a high degree of precision. That's pretty cool. So I guess it sort of makes sense, me using um, sort of how much light passes through this solution as a sort of measure for is there growth going on and then this as a measure for is there respiration going on. That sort of makes sense, fine. So risk assessment, environmental, ethical considerations, whatever. And then I have, again, huge tables of raw data. I don't understand why they make us include all of this raw data. I think it's, okay, I sort of get it that like all of this raw data is important for them to go through and make sure that you're not just like making things up. But like, you wouldn't see this in a paper. <laughs> okay, so after my raw data, then I have a bunch of process data. So the values for this process data were obtained by subtracting the absorbance value for each trial by the control to account for any growth other than yeast that may have occurred in the starch solutions. This was to make the results more reliable. This is an example calculation. Um, so here I use this particular example to illustrate what I'm doing, um, but I don't have to calculate it for all of them. All of the calculation, like all of the outputs of this calculation are already in this huge table. Um, and then I have a graph. So this graph shows you exactly what's happening, um, where the points on the graph illustrate the mean values and error bars represent standard deviation. So looking at this graph, it seems that the absorbance after six hours is trending upwards and then it goes down at 50 degrees. That's really quite interesting. That's sort of what you'd expect to see. You'd expect to see like a increase in respiration and then that drops at too high temperatures probably because enzymes are being denatured. So statistical analysis for this t-test was used. This is the formula shown here. You don't need to show the formula for a t-test. Come on. Like I get it, but like it Okay, so I have the R values for the differences between temperatures. This is statistical crimes right here. You're not allowed to just do a bunch of t-tests and be like, there is a statistical difference between these without correcting for the fact that you're doing loads of comparisons. Doing t-tests for this sort of experiment is the worst idea. It does not make any sense. You're looking at a trend. You're not going to be doing t-tests in between each point of the trend. That makes no sense whatsoever. I don't know what I was thinking there. Anyway, let's move on. Furthering the statistical analysis, the equation of the curve of best fit for the graph was made using Google Sheets. So it gave me the equation of the line. A polynomial of fifth degree was chosen for this curve since it maximized the R squared value without making the curve too complicated. The R squared value is a representative of how well the curve fits the data points from a scale of 0 to 1. The R squared value of the curve was 0.998, which I valued, evaluated as sufficiently close to 1. Okay, that's fine. Then I differentiated this curve, and it was possible to obtain the equation for the gradient of the curve, essentially how the gradient changes over time. This is important since it illustrates the rate of change of growth as a function of temperature. Now this, this is interesting because I essentially just like differentiate this and see how it's changing. So you can see here that, you know, growth isn't changing much. Whereas here it's growing loads and then here it just drops, it tanks, which is really what you'd expect. This is this graph is the most interesting in this IA. This is illegal. <laughs> anyway, um, I explain the graph and be like the graph the line crosses the axis at 44.2 degrees, suggesting that the increase in temperature has a positive effect on growth until reaching 44.2 degrees. And past this, any increase in temperature is detrimental towards growth. 
Additionally, with the increasing gradient, it can be seen that temperature has an exponential effect on the growth rates of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. That's really interesting. That makes sense. Um, I like this graph. Doing some sort of analysis like this, which is sort of out there um, and unconventional, is usually fine. Uh, doing an analysis where you compare a bunch of t-tests, where you compare a bunch of points on a line uh, with t-tests is not, not the right way to do it. Don't do that. Anyway, uncertainties. To calculate the uncertainty associated with each of the values, necessary to use the percentage measurement uncertainty in each piece of apparatus, and to add these up to then give the total percentage measurement uncertainty. Cool. So I got the uncertainty, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I have absolute uncertainty. This is something I learned from chemistry, really, but you can apply it to any IA. Okay, concluding. From the results, it's suggested that temperature has a significant impact on the growth rate since nearly all the changes in temperature gave a statistical difference from each other. Oh god, that's bad. At low temperatures, temperature has a low, small effect on growth rates. This increases with temperature. <laughs> It's honestly paining me to read. Even the fact that R is meant to be lowercase, not uppercase. So I'm literally making up how I did these t-tests. Like, that's not right. Anyway, it can be inferred that from these results, the optimum temperature for yeast is of 44.2 degrees. Additionally, there is a maximum in the differentiated curve at 38.5 degrees. This is where the rate of change for, of growth for yeast begins to slow down, suggesting there is some negative influence of temperature on the growth of, of yeast, despite the growth still increasing. So then I discuss, talk about why this might be the case in terms of the science. Um, so that's quite important. While you may have a bunch of findings, or you may not have a bunch of findings, whatever you find, um, you do need to discuss the science behind it as this will give the science points to you. Um, so doing this, is quite valuable so make sure to not miss this part out um, and then the evaluation strengths limitations improvements nice and easy writing this sort of evaluation for biology chemistry whatever ias you're writing for it tends to be quite rinse and repeat you just sort of do it over and over again strengths limitations improvements etc etc i hope me reading through my IA was interesting at all for you if it did then give this video a like and i'll see you in the next one